Hi, sports fans. Another royal parent connection as the king of online sports betting done hooked up with the underground king once again to spread the news. Listen, $5. Yes, five measly dollars could get you $200 in free betting. $200 from five. Listen, do the math, right? I ain't good at math, but I want you to do the math for me. That's asinine. Five to get you 200. All you have to do is go to your Google Play Store or your Apple Store, however you get your apps, and get to downloading that DraftKings Sportsbook app, baby, because it's about to be a whole lot of fun, especially when you enter the promo code top billing and get to winning. Lots of fun this season, and it doesn't stop at just football, right? I'm all in it, baby, for basketball, baseball, whichever sport you like. DraftKings has you covered like makeup. And guess what? If you don't have online sports betting in your state, it does not matter because DraftKings Daily Fantasy is where it's at. And make sure you don't forget about those same game parlays as well. That's where you can enter multiple bets in the same game and level up for even more winning. Five will get you 200. Tell them the Underground King sent you, baby. Let's have some fun, all right? Salute. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. All right, you know, if it's some LOL, we got to start there before we get into it. My man Lamar was fired up, right? <laughs> right? I, I don't think I've ever seen him like this. He was fired up on that penalty by your boy Big Pat Ricard here. He was like, dog, it's me. I don't need no help downfield. I'm already downfield, man. It's me. You stupid or something? <laughs> hey, did I think? I did I think after that, the, after the adrenaline wore off, he realized he was talking to Big Pat Ricard. <laughs> Pat Ricard looked at him like, "The fuck you just say to me?" He was like, uh, "Um, uh, I said, um, Greg Roman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was talking to Greg Roman, man. Uh, like everybody else on YouTube, they, they be doing. Yeah, I, I, I was talking to him, man. Pat Ricard was like, "You better be talking to Roman." <laughs> I'll see you in the showers. <laughs> Lamar Jackson was like, please don't hurt me. <laughs> and he was fired up, man. I'm loving this from Lamar. You can tell that man, that competitive nature, that competitive force that he is right there, it does not matter. He's trying to win. These boys are out here giving it their all, man. And hey, here we go. To me, this was a great victory, despite what people, the haters going to come in here and try to poo-poo it and say Tampa's not as good as this and that and blah, blah, blah. They even did that to the Jets. Now look at that Jets win. Remember that? <laughs> but your boy Lamar better be careful talking to Pat Ricard like that. He got to see that man later. <laughs> come on, man. All right. I already know what people are going to say. I'm so glad that I don't do social media. <laughs> Only social media I get is when people come to my YouTube channel and give me their opinions. And nobody was giving me any opinions. Or I wasn't getting any alerts on the YouTube during the first half. But I know people were out there poo-pooing them and trying to fire everybody and trade Lamar and all this goofy shit. The second half showed me what the Ravens are about and what they can be. The second half adjustments in this game, especially on offense, was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Going with the small ball. Going with a little bit of tempo at certain times, just switching it up on them, having to make Tampa continuously tackle, and then you started to see the damn break. Those boys were wilting out there, man. They didn't want no parts of it. And you had Big Gus Edwards back out there doing his thing as well. Look at this one right here, though. The man of the hour. Well, it was several men of the hour on this one, but let's start with Likely right here. You see him running this crosser. Uh, you got Demarcus Robinson out here who did a, a damn good job, too, when they were really going with that flash quick game. Uh, you had him on a stop route here. Clear out by Dev Doof, who also was balling out there. Everybody was balling. And uh, you can see the product placement with Lamar right here. But uh, great to see Isaiah Likely out there reminding everybody the type of talent that he has. Check this out. Look at Lamar. Training to his progression. Jakob. <laughs> Come on, man. That was a virgin tight window there. And, of course, they were going tempo on this particular play, so they couldn't show the full highlight of it. But you guys should remember right there. Look at that. Breaking two tackles, right, and getting some yak ups out the yard right there. Getting that yak right there, slinging a man off, making him fertilize himself. But look at the throw here by Lamar. 
coming off the pool here. Originally wants to originally looking at that man coverage right here. So he had to come up off that one pretty quickly. He looked to see if possibly it could be something downfield with Dev Duve. But of course, if you know the type of defense that were running that they were running, he had to get rid of the ball quickly because they were green dogging. If he was going to stay in, they were going to eventually rush him. As you can see, Devin White right here. He's coming loose right there as the free hitter. But look at the product placement. Virgin type window. Oh, phenomenal, man. And his yards, yards, yards after the catch. Uh, somebody came to one of my Johns uh, on another on another thing about Jalen Hurts talking about uh, them not having any weapons or, or going all in for Lamar. And I'm thinking to myself, uh, did he forget about Isaiah? Likely. <laughs> that's one of these dudes that's going to show up. I'm telling you right now. They just got like a Kyle Pitts. I said this in the preseason. This guy plays exactly like Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts on the team too? Come on, man. Man, Greg Roman was up in his bag. I almost jumped out my seat when I saw this drawing right here. This is like a new age version of Spider 2 Y Banana. Think about this. You get a option look. It almost looks like it could be one of those old school options uh, with Lamar here and King and Drake on the outside. You get slide protection. So everybody's sliding this way here off that look. But then you get Isaiah Likely right here on a block and then release on kind of a sell route. So like a new age version of that, John, I was like, what? I was like, this is cold, Slim. Check this out. Man going right here, you see the slide protection the entire way right there. Uh, if you're reading your keys as a defender on this one, you're like, what the hell? Is this a option? So you're reading your option keys, trying to get it to bend back to the inside at the very least. Then you get a block and release here, Mizell likely. Fall away jumper from Lamar and Jacob. <laughs> that play design was hard. I don't know how you combat this, especially if you're talking about somebody who's working from inside out. Having this man on the inside going against safeties. Oh, my God. Check this out. Going against Keanu Neal. Oh, muscle relaxes that man into a coma. Look at the separation right here. Pandemic still on in his mind, no doubt about that. Six feet at all times, getting on your man Keanu Neal. What? Come on. Look at him set him up right here. Keanu with the outside leverage. He's no shell, no, no sell, no tail right here. Getting it on, getting up feel right here. Look at it. Very quiet in his body movement, his eyes and everything. It does actually look like he wants to get up feel. But look at the lower body agility. Sticks that foot in the ground, changes direction. Two your your two top players, right? Or perhaps, possibly. I uh, got to put Dev Duve in there, but Isaiah likely is that guy. He just needs to get up, snuff, up to snuff. Mark Andrews has similar change of direction skills as well. Two, but two tight ends who can do this? Look at that. Keanu Neal spinning like a dreidel. Come on, man. That pandemic separation. That's that early pandemic separation too, man. That was back in the month with would cough or sneeze or some shit, boy. The music would stop like <laughs> Now, imagine having to wear it, though, on this fallaway jumper right here by Lamar for a touchdown here. Come on, man. Oh, the toe tap and everything about it. The football intelligence, the yards after catch, the hands, the route running ability. You can't tell me that they didn't strike gold with this cat in the draft. This is, <laughs> this is some big time shit, man. Look at this. Both feet in. Even being on the scramble rules, understanding that element of the game at that younger age, Isaiah likely to succeed. I know everyone's a big J.K. Dobbins guy. Nobody was mentioning my favorite back, Gus Edwards. I believe Gus Edwards to be one of the best kept secrets in the NFL. I told y'all before, I cover him at the University of Miami. Most people don't even know he played for Miami. They just remember him at Rutgers and... My man is just a big, fast, agile freak. I don't know how else to say it. You see him on this gap scheme here. They got uh, Zeitler on the pool. You got Oliver coming through on a cross formation block, getting the first thing smoking here on the opposite color jersey. And watch Gus press and curl. 
right? Press the hole, uh, bounce it to the outside, make two people miss point blank range. He said a great bat can always make the first person miss, but it becomes something otherworldly here when the first person is a free hitter. Stick that foot in the ground, spin cycle on him. And then, of course, the second person, <laughs> see that big mama jumper coming, they're going to try to go low. He ain't want no parts of that right there. Tried to clip his feet there. And we can even see Lamar getting involved in the play, uh, helping to get to the outside. Everybody was doing a good job blocking in this game. I mean, everyone, perimeter blocking, everybody was getting it on. Uh, it, was a, it was a great sight to see in, in the second half. Very similar action, this time with Prochet crossing formation. You're pulling powers, and Gus does a great job navigating this. Uh, pretty much like power old, counter old type scheme here. Gus sticks that foot in the ground. Once he sees the organic crease, you can see almost like a pin and pull action. Look at him stick that foot in the ground and then get upfield. Great way to be able to navigate this here. You can see down block on the shade, Gus reading that, following behind Powers there. You could possibly have seen him normally maybe try to press this gap right here, but no, nah, he saw something, stuck that foot in the ground, and navigated his way upfield. Gus getting upfield, baby. Gus the bus. Man, I hope he's okay. I don't know exactly what the injury, maybe his hamstring or something like that. I don't know. It's been tough sledding on the running backs, but you can tell the type of run team they are. They keep putting them in. Big shout outs to King and Dre. He's definitely showing he's worth it. And when Gus is getting downhill like that, it makes these schemes even more in vogue uh, the way you're able to do some of these read options here. If you see, I noticed they were playing the read option a little bit different. You see it coming out of pistol here. They're working off Joe Tryon, and he kind of stays put. He kind of puts himself in a 50-50 exchange situation. You can see Lamar on the read here. It almost looks originally like he's going to approach the first action here, which almost, of course, would force Lamar to give the ball. I mean, sorry, would force Lamar to keep the ball. But then Lamar's like, oh, damn, I can't actually get outside because he put himself in the perfect spot to work both the front end action and the action coming out the back door. If you see right here, Lamar stick that foot up in the ground and he gets vertical himself. He just needs that little bit of a space. Look, that little bit of a space, that type of agility. He's able to make you miss in close quarters. And you can see right there, breaking a couple of tackles by Tryon and Vita Vea. Made this big animal fertilize himself. Man, that big shouldn't be fertilizing himself. A lot of fertilizer right there. And getting upfield, making everybody miss. Come on, man. You know what? I think the momentum changed on this particular play right here. This screen pass, this perimeter screen to Demarcus Robinson here. Now, from the angle that we got originally, it, I didn't see all this room over here. It looked like he made chicken salad out of chicken shit, which he did. But this was set up perfectly, the spacing of it. You see Likely doing work. Likely's blocking has gotten a lot better that quickly. He's very active in the blocking. You can see right here. Damn, look at that. He grabbed a man up by a shirt lapel. Damn. <laughs> right about to drive his ass into the concession stand but look at robinson right here stick his foot in the ground oliver does a good job here of avoiding a penalty first and foremost as you can see he was coming right here looking like he was about to block in the back which have been problematic but he kind of pulled up and then robinson was able to work off of him made a guy miss there and then they still had enough room on the outside for him to get upfield and move the sticks, man. Hell of a play by Robinson. Uh, hell of a call at that time, too. I love it when they go to the screen game in certain situations. I feel like a lot of teams just aren't really prepared to go that route. Look at this cat counter here. You're going to be pulling both Linderbaum and Ronnie Stanley here. Get that counter action from King and Drake. And he finds that crease absolutely perfectly. Great blocking by Oliver going against the middle linebacker here. 
So there's one thing that people need to know about linebacking play. There's guys who are great when they're uncovered and they're free. Then there are guys who are great no matter what. Like they can work off blocks, stack and shed and everything. A guy like Devin White is one of these guys, man, that if you can get a body on him, he can be had. Patrick Queen's like that too. Look at that. Oh, oh, look at it. Lay it together. And Devin White unable to do anything. As great as he is and as fantastic and freakish of an athlete as he is, him getting blocked here by a tight end, pulling everything right there, holding that, angling off. Ronnie Stanley getting the end man on the line of scrimmage. Linderbaum as well working out there. You can see that crease. Your man needed to have that that arm free at all times anyway to get uh, Drake to move back inside, but he's unable to combat that. And, of course, we know Drake able to slip through and able to run. He can run. You know who needs some love? This man right here. My man Linderbaum was doing the damn thing. Sands the play early in the game when he got that prison loving from Vita Vea. When you see him in certain actions like this zone action here, you get to see why he was picked where he was picked. The man is an athlete. See him right here. Look at him. Get out on the second level against Devin White here. Uh, a hat on a hat. Absolutely perfect. A hat on a hat. Free guy, of course, going to be the quarterback. And look at him. Get up, Phil. Continue to drive and drive. Driving Miss Daisy to the stove. I was trying to drive you to the stove, Miss Daisy. Look at that. Devin White can't get off the block. That's crazy. Like an old head can't get off the block. My man Gus still going right there. I think that was a play he may have hurt his hamstring, though. But, man, Linderbaum out there doing work, man. You got to give that guy some credit. I love watching him in a lot of the move game as far as the run game goes. With them putting pass tags on the back of these run calls, you can see the run action right here. Entire line and even Demarcus Robinson. They're block and run. Uh, you can see the unmarked defender here working off of him. I would think if the unmarked defender here, it's like a triple threat action. The unmarked defender here goes this way. You can see Lamar possibly take off and run. You get the blocking here on the perimeter as well. However, if he kind of stays put, you get that pass tag on an in-breaking route here to Dev Duvernay. Duvernay should be targeted, I think, like close to 10 times a game in, in just different ways. You see that right there? Widen it out? Uh, because Lamar has that ability to throw from different arm slots, what everybody talks about with Patrick Mahomes, Matthew Stafford, and everything. But then when Lamar does it, it's like it has like a negative connotation to it or whatever like that. But you can see right here, he widens the defense just with his feet. Just that action right there of the threat of him possibly throwing into likely able to get the defender to widen a little bit. And then he comes through with a great angle here to Dev Duve. And Dev Duve, he had a catch in traffic where he took a big hit. And I was thinking, like, that's the type of cat that you need. A cat like Hollywood Brown, Coward Wood Brown, he would have alligator arm to catch and shit and try not to catch it so he didn't get hit. Those, those are the type of guys that play Ravens football to me. All right, so I may come back and highlight the defense. There are a couple of defensive performances that stood out to me. I probably want to give them their own shine right here. So uh, real men watch to the end and then comment. I would like to see this particular play right here become a cheap touchdown for Lamar. I'm trying to get the scheme of it, the concept of it here, to see if it's actually a read. Like, who exactly is he reading on this one? Now, he's an unblocked defender, but if you see Lamar's basically looking at the midline here, his eyes are not over here to this defender because it doesn't look like they care about the defender because they believe that Dev Duve can beat whomever to the outside here, and I believe he can. Remember, I told you guys a story before. My best friend's son played on a team at Texas with Dev Duve when Dev Duve was a senior, and he just to come back and say that there's nobody who could run with Devin Duvernay. He was a cornerback, too, so he got to go against him in practice, and he said that he hated going against this dude. This dude is a damn animal here. More targets for this dude. Run what you brung, man. You got these guys on the team. 
Everybody wants to be like everyone else. Be your damn self. To me, they were the best version of themselves in the second half. Offense and defense, pretty much. Instead of thinking that you have to be like everyone else. And they switched it up, right? It was a lot of passing in this game. They won passing the ball and still played that Ravens football here. But right there, this could be a cheap touchdown because if Lamar was kind of at depth a little bit more, he could tap pass this to Dev Duve. And if there was any mess up in the process there, it would just be a forward pass and the, the ball would be down. And if he scored on this, it would be a cheap touchdown. I see it all the time in the NFL. Josh Allen and everybody in college get these cheap touchdowns. I want to see some for Lamar as well here. And it'll be a cheap receiving touchdown too for Dev Duve. And it'll be the same exact action. But he navigated this perfectly. Even outran a dude like Jamel Dean who has 4'3 speed, maybe faster than that. Dev Duve can run, man. But you know the rest. I. So there you have it. Great win by Baltimore, like I said before, being the best version of themselves. Damn right, a ton, ton of injuries. No doubt about that. Still a ton of injuries to some key players, and then they had even more injuries. The best player, Mark Andrews, getting injured. Gus Edwards, in my opinion, the best running back on the team injured. J.K. Dobbins out already. A lot of banged up guys there, tackles and everything, and they still get the job done. But you guys continue to complain. At all costs. So that's why I pulled back on Ravens coverage. You guys always complaining about this and that. I'm tired of hearing about Greg Roman and shit like that. I'll come back when necessary, but it is what it is until then. All right. But make sure you download that DraftKings app. Top billing is the code, man. Make sure you help your boy out there. Do me a solid on that one. Drop at the very least, download the app. Enter the promo code top billing, man. Five will get you two hundred. One five dollar bet will get you two hundred dollars. All right. Strike the band. What more can I say? Top billing. Top.